Hi guys, welcome back to MS Neuro TV brought to you by MS Views and News and sponsored by Santa Fe Genzyme, Biogen, and Celgene. I'm Anna Fernandez de Castro, the Assistant Development Coordinator at MS Views and News. First of all, we want to thank everyone who is joining us here tonight and to all of those of you who have followed us and participated during this year's MS Neuro TV series. We hope that you have enjoyed this series and were able to get many of your questions answered. Just so you know, we will be back next year in 2019 with new MS Neuro TV webinars, so keep your eyes open for the next inv invitation to join us in early January. MS Views and News is a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing education and information to the multiple sclerosis community. All right. So today our special guest is Dr. Donald Negroski, and he'll be talking to us all about the current oral MS therapy options that are out on the market right now. And he'll also be giving us a quick overview um, on all of these medications, including how they work, their safety, and their efficacy. Dr. Negroski has been a neurologist for 32 years and is the medical director of the Multiple Sclerosis Center of Sarasota in Florida. He is also a clinical assistant professor in the development in the Department of Clinical Science at Florida State University's College of Medicine. Dr. Negroski has made numerous contributions to clinical trials and has been an expert presenter nationally and internationally in the field of MS. His achievements have earned him multiple awards and is listed yearly in the Guide to America's Top Physicians. All right, so first we're going to start by playing a short video interview with Dr. Negroski. And after the video, Dr. Negroski will be available for a live 15 minute Q&A where you will be able to send in your questions anonymously through the text box. We just want to remind you, please keep your questions on topic about oral MS therapies. Also, just a little reminder for those of you who are calling in over the phone and do not have access to the video, um, please know that you will hear a few minutes of silence while we play the pre-recorded video interview. But please don't worry, make sure you stay on the line because once the video is done playing, you will be able to hear us again um, during the live Q&A that we're gonna be having with Dr. Negroski. Okay, let's begin. Welcome to MS Neuro TV, presented by MS Views and News. MS Neuro TV is a comprehensive educational program bringing together MS professionals from across the United States covering the topics that you want to learn more about. To register for MS Neuro TV webinars, visit www.msviewsandnews.org. Thank you. We hope you enjoy the program. Dr. Negroski, welcome back. I would like to ask you a couple more questions, and I know it's a few months later, but I would like to ask you this now anyway. The oral treatment therapies, how do you explain this to the patients, and what can you tell us about them as far as the efficacy and the safety of these medications? So the oral agents uh, came out uh, uh, relatively recently by, by MS criteria. I mean, the first drugs, the first uh, FDA approved drugs to treat MS were in the injections, and they came out, the first one in 1993. So it wasn't uh, until about uh, 2000 or so, uh, 2010, uh, that we started to, to want a oral therapy. 
because patients were asking, when is the pill, pill coming out? Is there going to be a pill for interferon? Is there going to be a pill for Copaxone? And I don't think, personally, I don't think that will ever happen. The way the drug works in the system is hard to make pills. So when the first pill came out, it was called Gelenia or Fingolimod. So there was uh, patients uh, finally got a pill for MS. That's the first one. And that was soon followed a few years later by Abagio, which is a oral pill for MS. And then the last oral pill soon thereafter was Tecfidera. So Jeleni is, is a pill that works kind of uniquely. Each one of these work completely different. They're not all the same. So uh, Jelenia kind of works on receptors in the body that are in the blood vessels, in the lymph glands, and lymph nodes, on the heart and on lungs and things. So when you give a patient uh, a Jelenia, it sequesters or builds up all these uh, immune cells that we think that are abnormal in MS patients and stores them in the lymph nodes. So when you do a blood test, and to try to measure these cells, they're not in the bloodstream for the most part. They're sequestered. They're not dead, but they're just sequestered. And if they're sequestered, they don't float in the bloodstream and end up in the brain and cause problems. The trouble with Jelenia, it's really not a, a, a trouble per se, but it's, it's kind of tedious when you first use it because you have to be monitored for the first day. Uh, after you take the pill because it can uh, drop your blood pressure and your pulse. So you have to have medical monitoring t for that. And then that uh, the potential it tends to uh, go away over time. Uh, sometimes it can affect the, the eye in a different way that optic neuritis does. It's, it doesn't cause optic neuritis, but they could, uh, it can affect the eye infrequently and uh, you could be monitored, you should be monitored. Uh, there's a rare blood pressure uh, thing that can affect the blood vessels in the brain. It's extremely rare, but you should know about that as well as a uh, skin exam. That's uh, Gelenia. The uh, second drug is Abagio. That's given once a day. Um, and it is, it works a little bit differently. Abagio when uh, these immune cells become activated and they eventually get into the brain and cause scars and damage and symptoms. So you want to do anything to prevent cells from dividing, these activated cells to divide. So when cells divide, they need certain building blocks and enzymes. So what this drug does, it kind of prevents certain building blocks from making cell walls. So if you can't make a cell wall, you can't repopulate the cells. doesn't necessarily kill the cells, but it, it doesn't repopulate. And uh, therefore, it, uh, it lessens the, the cells into the brain. Uh, Abagio does have some uh, potential side effects, and like all these other therapies, I encourage patients to go to the package insert from the FDA and kind of read everything in detail. And it's not my job to kind of go over all the fine print, but this is a bird's eye view of the drugs. So the, the last drug uh, that's an uh, oral pill is called Tecfidera. It works a little bit differently. It works in, uh, in chemicals called uh, oxidative stress. When a cell is stressed, it produces certain things, and oxidative stress is lessened with this medication. So that is given twice a day, one pill twice a day. Um, the, uh, the thing with that medication, it's easy to start, but in the first, say, four to six weeks after you are on the medication, uh, or during the first four to six weeks, you can get some GI complaints and some flushing. Uh, for the most part, that is mitigated uh, down the road by certain mitigating strategies we have, like aspirin and using uh, certain dietary uh, uh, things when you take your pill in the first six months or the first six weeks. So, so we have uh, three oral agents that were uh, desperately uh, uh, called for by patients. 
uh, to avoid injections. They work completely differently than the injectables. As I mentioned to my patients, there's not one right pill for everyone. Each medication has their pros and cons. Uh, the injectables, the same thing. Uh, so we have to have a shared decision-making process with the patient and the healthcare provider to come up with the right medication for. Concerning the oral treatments, can you tell us for which forms of multiple sclerosis, which different types of MS that oral treatments are used? So uh, these medications are uh, FDA approved for relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis. Uh, the injectables, uh, um, uh, the interferons, glutyramer acetate, and Zimbrida, as well as the injectable medic, uh, the oral medications, or for relapsing forms of MS. They are not FDA indicated for primary progressive MS. Dr. Nagroski, thank you very much for doing this interview series with us for 2018. Okay, that was terrific. I hope that everyone can hear us clearly. This is Jennifer Falk, uh, Director of Development over at MS News and News. Um, we're really happy to have Dr. Nagroski join us this evening. Um, right now, it's, it's exciting to see so many people uh, on the line engaged, and we just want you guys to ask as many questions as you have now. Um, it's the time to start typing in your questions. Um, hopefully, you see the um, question box on the top right hand side of your screen. If you don't see it, look for a little orange arrow. Uh, when you click on that arrow, it should open up the control panel where you can type your questions. Uh, no one else can see it. I will be speaking and, and asking Dr. Nagroski the questions as they come in. Um, so it'll uh, be first come first serve. So whoever gets their questions in uh, first, I'll be asking those first. Um, so we hope to get to as many as questions as possible. Um, and so now I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Nagroski. Welcome, Dr. Nagroski. Uh, thank you so much, Jennifer. I'm a uh, pleasure to be here tonight. Wonderful. We're very happy to have you here with us tonight. Um, we have a lot of questions. And um, I have uh, the first question I have here is, uh, are there any increased risks of cancer in the use of oral medications? Uh, the short answer is yes, but the long answer, it depends on the oral medication. So um, any medication that may be immunosuppressant in terms of decreasing your ability to fight off infections or cancer may increase your risk of certain forms of cancer. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the increased risk is is there, but it's it's relatively uh, small and uh, uh, hopefully with monitoring can be mitigated. Okay, thank you. And um, our next question would be, we have so many questions here, would there be a reason to take Tecfidera while being diagnosed with primary progressive? So Tecfidera is not indicated for primary progressive multiple sclerosis. Uh, there is a infusion drug that has the FDA indication for primary progressive MS. So the answer is uh, no, it's not uh, FDA approved for PPMS. Okay, and I'm gonna follow that up with another question. Um, can you tell us if there's any new oral medications that are coming out within the next year or in the future for primary progressive or for secondary progressive MS? So uh, we think that there's a, a new oral medication, uh, which is kind of similar to the way Gelenia works for secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. In terms of primary progressive MS, I think we're, we're going to have to kind of see what the FDA says. 
there is a oral medication that uh, may be available in the United States. It's available in certain portions of Europe for patients with uh, relapsing forms of MS. Uh, so we'll have to see what the FDA says uh, regarding that particular indication. So these are actually exciting times because, uh, you know, there's 16 or 17 FDA-approved drugs to treat relapsing forms of MS and one to treat primary progressive MS. And uh, the uh, collar is extremely um, uh, bright in terms of knowing that there are uh, several in the uh, pipeline and which and hopefully should be available in the next uh, year to year and a half and perhaps even shorter than that. Yes, yeah, they're exciting times indeed. That's good news. Um, I have another question coming in. Um, given the new warning related to discontin discontinue of Fingalimod, how would you recommend discontinuing for a variety of reasons? Yeah, so there is a, a new warning uh, for that, uh, uh, a small number of patients, 30 plus patients uh, were discontinued in terms of uh, Jelenia, and within a few months they had a, a significant rebound, so to speak, of their MS and MRI activity. So even though it's uh, a small number uh, of patients um, that uh, that experience that uh, you do have to be uh, cautious and with Jelenia uh, you have to have when you change any drug you have to have like what's called plan A and plan B in terms of the specific drug that you're uh, thinking about putting the patient on so in those 35 cases that were identified uh, they uh, occurred within two to 24 weeks after discontinuation of Jelenia. Uh, so it is rare uh, knowing that there's been over 261,000 patients treated with Jelenia worldwide and over 100,000 in the United States. Um, but the neurologist needs to be aware that there is always that possibility of, of what's called rebound. Okay. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a question. Um, the oral medications each address MS differently, as you said in, in your talk. Other than trying each one separately and possibly incurring further damage, how can you know which one is working for you? So uh, with relapsing MS, the way we kind of judge uh, patients' response are obviously the same kind of parameters that we looked at in the clinical trials. So if a patient with relapsing MS has continuing relapses on therapy, assuming that they're taking it. Now, a lot of patients are on medication, but they're not taking it uh, religiously and it may not be as effective. So if you're on a drug for at least six months, some people say a year, and you have uh, a relapse or certainly two relapses, you have to have the conversation that that may not be the drug for you. In terms of MRI activity, if you have a couple more lesions or at least uh, obviously three more lesions on your scan that may or may not be symptomatic, you have to have that conversation with your neurologist that the drug may not be efficacious. There's no right uh, uh, drug for each patient. So different mechanisms of action, different side effects, different tolerability issues. So you have to keep in mind that you can always change therapies now that we have a whole host of available options uh, now and uh, soon uh, down the pike. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, I know that you attended Ectrim this year. If you could please explain to our audience what Ectrim is and also what you learned about looking towards the future and future and advancements, um, any new methods of 
looking at markers that may be useful to measure a patient's response to a specific drug, a way to know that the drug is working, something new that you learned there. So ECTRAMS is a international meeting, uh, usually run by the Europeans uh, for patients uh, or for MS, uh, given to physicians who treat MS patients and researchers and things like that. So this year in Berlin, there are, I think, about 9,400 attendees. Wow. So the meeting is so large, it, it kind of grows by 1,000 attendees a year, it seems like. But uh, some of the buzz that was uh, around this meeting was the concept of biomarkers or how we kind of follow a patient's response to a particular drug or any drug. And one such uh, biomarker is called neurofilament light. Uh, the, the, the term is NFL, uh, neurofilament light, which is a marker of axonal integrity and axonal uh, viability. So if those levels go up in the spinal fluid, then you have kind of more uh, brain cells or axons that are not viable or perhaps dying. So what, uh, what they've found is that there's a uh, blood test that may work just as good as a spinal tap, which uh, can, can show the NFL level. And obviously patients wouldn't want to have spinal taps all the time to measure, uh, you know, the response of this marker. So uh, relatively simple uh, blood test. Uh, may be available, and then the next step is if the level goes up, meaning that you have more axonal loss, then the drug may not be, you may not be responding to the particular drug. If the level goes down or reaches a certain level, then maybe you're a good responder. So we can potentially use that as a marker of response uh, to a therapy in addition to the normal things that we we look at, as I mentioned, relapse rate, uh, MRI activity, disability, things like that. So I think that uh, that was kind of an exciting uh, topic that came up during uh, ECTROMS. That is exciting and something to uh, keep our eyes open for in the future, a blood test like that. Um, yep. I have I have a lot of a lot of questions here. Um, here's another one is um, hold on just a second. Let me see here. Okay, so can a disease modifying therapy suddenly stop working for me after years of no lesions or relapses? Um, can there still be progression without a new MRI lesion being seen? Yeah, uh, the answer is yes. Um, and uh, some of my patients uh, kind of are faced with that. They, they may mm -hmm. have progression of their cognitive decline or increasing fatigue or increasing uh, changes on their neurological exam. But when you do an MRI of the brain as well as the spinal cord, sometimes if you only look at the, the brain, MS can hide in the spinal cord and you can miss some lesions. But assuming that you image the spinal cord in the brain and there's no new lesions, they're really not having discrete relapses, their disability can uh, worsen over time. So we kind of think that there's two, two uh, things going on in MS patients perhaps early on or perhaps simultaneously, there's a lot of inflammation going on, which leads to relapses and kind of enhancing MRI activity. Uh, but at the same time, or perhaps down the road, there's a uh, simultaneously uh, 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 issue with uh, uh, neurodegeneration where you have the, the cells, the brain cells, the axons, and the myelin just start to kind of slowly uh, peter out or degenerate, and that may explain some of the kind of progression of the disease without having MRI activity and relapses. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, I'm going to wrap it up with our final question uh, for the evening, unfortunately, but um, here's our last question is, 
Is there any evidence that taking um, an oral treatment or pill form of uh, MS medication is less or more effective than uh, any other way a drug is administered? So the issue is, uh, is a pill more effective than an infusion or an injection under the skin? And the answer is uh, we really don't know. Some patients respond beautifully to different methods of administration, and the orals are, even though there's like three orals on the market, they all work uh, kind of differently with different side effect profiles, and you, it's really difficult to compare one drug uh, against uh, uh, one oral agent against another because they really haven't been studied against each other. Uh, so that's it's a tough question to ask uh, and answer uh, yeah. uh, because there's a lot of unknowns, and I think uh, uh, you know you should have that conversation with your MS neurologist, and he or she can kind of guide you through some of the the uh, pros and cons about the different agents. Well, thank you, Dr. Nagorowski, and, and thank you for joining us tonight and sharing all of this information and your knowledge with all of us tonight. We're very grateful to have you here with us. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and thank you, everyone, for uh, dialing in and, and uh, learning about MS. Absolutely. And I'm going to turn it over to Anna Christina. I think she has some final closing words for all of us tonight. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you again, Dr. Negroski. Thank you so much for, for all the time that you have put in um, to joining us um, during this year's MS Neuro TV series, for taking the time to answer questions. Um, we really do appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> And uh, we'd also like to thank um, all of you who have joined us today on MS Neuro TV. And to those of you who have followed us throughout the entire year, we really, really appreciate that. And we really hope you've been enjoying it. Um, please remember to complete the brief survey that's going to pop up um, as soon as the webinar is finished, um, because your feedback is important to us um, so that we can um, continue to customize our webinars around our viewers. So we will be back in January with more MS Neuro TV webinars with new speakers and exciting topics that we know that you'll all enjoy, um, such as uh, the newest and latest research updates, yoga for MS, uh, meditation, and more. So don't worry, we will keep you in the loop with all the details through email. All of these webinars and videos, including tonight's recording, can be found on our MS Views and News YouTube Learning channel within the week. So subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you get alerts on our latest posts, including videos of our live events. You can also follow us through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you've been enjoying these webinars so far, please make sure you visit our website and check out some of our free live events um, that happen all over the United States. We're constantly adding new locations, so keep an eye out. Um, and for more information on any of our events and what's new in the world of multiple sclerosis, please visit us on our website at www.msvn.org. And last but certainly not least, we'd like to give a big thank you to Sanofi Genzyme, Biogen, and Celgene, and viewers like you for your ongoing support to make this program possible in 2018. Thanks again to everybody who's joined us today and all throughout this year. We'll see you again in 2019. Thank you, everyone. Good night.